Let's continue our series of the top 10 uncommitted prospects in the 2021 class, talking about Tommy Brockmeyer and a little bit of Tony Grimes. And all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, Ken folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on step milk. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk a little bit about a top offensive tackle in this 2021 class. That would be one Tommy Brockmeyer and his brother James, who many people believe is an Alabama lean right now, the both of them. Saban was trying to get them on campus before the pandemic hit. And right now, that was the only program that was going to get a plural number of visits. And that's not a small thing because we can really tie the number of times that a recruit visits a campus to the expectation that he is more than likely going to commit to play there. Getting kids on campus is a big deal. Don't let that fool you. That also is one of the reasons why we're all kind of not putting a lot of emphasis into some of the commitments that we're seeing during the pandemic because if we get college football on time and it's looking more and more like we will, we do not know what that's going to mean for recruiting and how you're going to be able to host visitors. If you can't host a full assortment of fans, and nobody sees that happening, at least in September, maybe even in October, and maybe through the rest of the college football season, you're probably not going to be able to host a lot of visitors, if any at all. So every visit that you can get counts. And when you're looking at top prospects, one of the things that I tend to really key on is how many times they make a visit, whether it be unofficial or official, and how often they were making that visit in the lead up to their commitment. Now, with Brockmeyer, you know what you're getting, right? But more than that, I think Texas has to be considered a favorite even over Alabama because Blake Brockmeyer was an All-American at the University of Texas, and there are a tremendous amount of ties to the Longhorns for the Brockmeyers, right? And looking at Tommy Brockmeyer and his profile, six foot six, 283 pounds, a five-star in the 247 Sports Composite, a top five prospect nationally in the composite top 10 prospect nationally in the top 247 and the number one player in the state of Texas it is the kind of player that Tom Herman needs to win you cannot allow Tommy Brockmeyer or his brother James for that matter to leave the state this is how Nick Saban built what he built at LSU and at Alabama he started by putting an electric fence up around those states and saying I cannot let you go starting with Mark Spears, back when he took over the job at LSU, Spears was actually going to go to Southern because that's what it was in Baton Rouge. And he said, look, coach, you ain't got to worry about me leaving the state. You ain't even got to worry about me leaving the city. I'm going right down the street to Southern. To which Nick Saban was like, yo, I get what you're doing. I get why you're doing it. Tell me what we need to do to help make this happen. And one of those things was let him play defensive end. And we know what kind of a player Mark Spears is end up becoming. I think that's what Tom Herman and his staff need to be doing with Brock Meyer, especially in this all pivotal year where they need number one, a great recruiting class, but also a, a great finish. Because after going 10 and 4, 8 and 5, they probably need to come back with nothing less than a 10 win season and a berth in the Big 12 championship game, if not a Big 12 championship win. And Texas is just on the outside of the top 10 looking in, but they've been getting high quality prospects because that's what they do. They get blue chippers. Those are four and five star kiddos. And getting a bunch of them from the state of Texas and really building your class through Texas also helps you in recruiting the state of Texas. When you get a JoJo Earl, he doesn't go to LSU, perhaps goes to Texas. When you get a Jason McClellan, he doesn't go to Alabama or commit to Oklahoma, perhaps he goes to Texas. And we know that Texas is one of the most fertile recruiting grounds in the country. And we know that Oklahoma treats it like home base. Many of the top prospects and top players that Oklahoma has had in its history come from the state of Texas, none bigger than Adrian Peterson, for which Mac Brown recently said that's the one that got away that I really regret not getting together. M meanwhile, one of the best players in Texas hit, or uh, Longhorn history, Vince Young, comes out of Houston. Same thing with Colt McCoy. Same thing with uh, J uh, Jordan Shipley, excuse me. And I was going to say Jackson Shipley, but that's his lesser younger brother. You can keep going through there and you can see how Longhorn programs have been built with the backbone being Texas talent and high quality Texas talent. So they need to absolutely try to lock this down. And if Brock Meyer does get to take a visit to Alabama, you got to make sure that you get a visit from him and his brother. And you got to lay on thick 
what it means to be a legacy at the University of Texas. And more than that, show him Sam Cosme. Because the other thing that you have to try to convince him is that he can end up in the NFL as a first-round draft pick. It's not something that Texas has seen done since 2015. And when it did happen, it was Malcolm Brown at defensive tackle. We're still waiting on a great offensive tackle or an offensive lineman to go in the first round for the Texas Longhorns in the Herman era. Sam Cosme could be that player for them. Now, I wanted to talk a bit about Tony Grimes, and I think that I'm gonna... Yeah. So Tony Grimes is being recruited heavily by North Carolina, which kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere because Grimes was really looking like an Ohio State lean, then looking like a Georgia lean. Now he looks like a North Carolina lean with Brian Doan coming in late to throw his crystal ball in there as we expect Grimes to, uh, to drop his top three on May 31st after dropping a top eight. He is the best cornerback in the country, according to the 247, six foot, 180 pounds. And you can see how the appeal of North Carolina's recruiting class, which he cited as being, hey, that's pretty good. I would like to join up with a class that's going to be pretty good. And they're, they're like number four in the rankings right now. But also, Dre Bly being hired in December 2019 after a short stint in the Alliance as an assistant coach has been a boon for Mac Brown. That is one of the best players in North Carolina history and one of the best players in ACC history had like 11 interceptions in one season at North Carolina and was a consensus All-American twice on top of an outstanding career in the NFL like when we make a short list of the best cornerbacks to play college football Dre Bly is on it so being coached by him is going to be a big deal for almost anybody and you can see that he being from the Tidewater Virginia region Grimes being from the Tidewater Virginia region is playing a big part into how they can get along in their kinship. I would not be surprised to find out that Tony Grimes picks North Carolina. However, Kerry Combs is coming on strong at Ohio State, and we know what kind of defensive prospects the University of Georgia turns out each and every year. Kirby Smart, a former safety at Georgia, knows exactly what good secondary play looks like, and the idea that you might have Keely Ringo on one side and Tony Grimes on the other in 2021-2022 I know it's intoxicating to Georgia fans, but if you're looking at DBU, it's Ohio State. They're able to put more and more players into the NFL at defensive back than anybody else in the country. 16 first-round draft picks since 2016, which is kind of the opposite of their wide receiver group. They've just been that good. I mean, you can continue to look down the line. Having two first-round picks both at cornerback is almost unheard of, and they did that in 2020 in April with Damon Arnett and Jeff Okuda. Looking at what's in front of him, I think he could break in and play right away. He's really that good. It's about convincing him, one, that you're going to be able to develop him and Kerry Combs will be like, hey, just check the receipts. And two, that you have an opportunity to play in a college football playoff and for a national championship to which Ohio State says, check the receipts. Georgia says, check the receipts. North Carolina needs to sell him on being the face of the program. Like, it'd be him and Sam Howell. You would be the face of that defense. And Jay Bateman knows exactly what to do as a defense coordinator. And I'm really interested to see what Jay Bateman and Dre Bly dream up for the secondary, especially when they get into high-profile games because they have a high-profile matchup against Auburn early in the year. And then, of course, they play in the ACC, which is going to have a good Virginia Tech. It's going to have a great Clemson. And Florida State, I believe, is going to come back with Mike Norvell, Jackie Shipp, and the like. They're going to be good to great. I genuinely believe that, but it's going to take a couple of years because Florida State and what Jimbo Fisher left was not anything that Willie Taggart could really dig himself out of in the amount of time for which they gave him. They only gave him like 21 games, maybe even less than that. I think he got a fewer number of games than Chad Morris did at Arkansas. Meanwhile, to Willie Taggart takes the Florida Atlantic job. Chad Morris takes the offensive coordinator job at Auburn. So, we're looking at LSU, or excuse me, we're looking at Alabama, Auburn, and Texas for Tommy Brockmeyer. We're looking at Georgia, Ohio State, and North Carolina for Tony Grimes. Those are two top prospects. Everybody should be very interested in where they land and who they land with. Uh, last thing that I wanted to say on the Tommy Brockmeyer thing was, dude is elite. I mean, just great hands, and I haven't seen that sort of just those hands at offensive tackle in some time. As a matter of fact, the last guy that I can remember having that kind of hands was Evan Neal. So maybe it was a long time. Maybe it was like two years ago. But we know what Evan Neal is going to be at Alabama. And by the way, that would be kind of fun, right? Evan Neal and Tommy Brockmeyer on the same squad. 
I can get up for that. Give me that as a as a tandem, and let's see what we can do with it, especially with Bryce Young quarterback. Yeah, Alabama is still Alabama, but you knew that. All right, that is it for me. Doses.